I'm Eddie Cannell. And I'm Tom Cannell. We're the Mortgage Brothers team, everyone, and this is episode 20 of the podcast, right? Oh, holy cow, 20. You know, Tom and I, we keep on looking at the board thinking, okay, how many are we? 20. Yeah. We I would have thought, double check. yeah, I, I would have thought the podcast board of directors would have pulled the plug by now. <laughs> <laughs> we keep on begging them. Hey, keep, give us one more shot. Keep, yeah, that's right. That's right. The summer's been been fun. We've had a couple of podcasts that we've not been able to record because we've been on vacation. Yeah. But we're back in the swing. Okay. So I think this is going to be a good episode. I mean, Tom, you and I have been talking about this, obviously. We're pretty excited about it. We want to talk about the Fed funds rate. When the Fed, Federal Reserve, says they're going to lower rates or increase rates. I mean, this is the whole buzz lately, right? Has been what where, where rates are going to go. Yeah. But I think, I think what, what started this whole conversation was borrowers calling us up and saying, you know what? Um, I'm going to hold off on that refinance because rates are going to go down on Wednesday. You know, I got a source that tells me rates are going down. I'd like to know just how much they're going to go down. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of borrowers asking yeah. us, you know, uh, we've actually had loans in process and they say, oh my goodness, we just heard that the feds are going to lower lower interest rates. What does that mean? Can we, right. Right. can we get a new interest rate? And so, yeah, we thought, you know what, this is a really complicated, this is like staring the Titanic in the face and trying to expose and talk about some of the intricacies of of how it works okay so, it, so it's almost impossible to do so we're really not going to do it we're going to like step back and like our kids in elementary school maybe kindergarten they'll come home and say hey dad look i i painted the uh, titanic like that's what we're doing right now is talking about a kindergartner's painting of the titanic so we're not economists we're not experts in this field we know enough to at least, I think, articulate to a layman, right? To everyone out there, the normal, you know, average person out there who's wondering about how the Federal Reserve, when they hear rates are going down or rates are going up, how does it affect their mortgages? How does it affect them and just in general their finances? Right, right, right. That's right. Kind of reminds me of uh, Sean Connery. I don't know. You remember? Oh, I, yeah. used, to, I used to do that, that imitation. Yeah, you that, did. From the medicine man. <laughs> he, you know, he's like, I, I've, I've found the cure for cancer, but I've lost it. <laughs> you know that. that Pretty good, man. Yeah, that like every time you 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 start to think that you've figured out how the Fed's movement and what they do, how it how it affects us, one little thing changes, and it's like, ah, crud. There goes my whole thought about it. So yeah, we really are not economists. We're trying to just uh, uh, make this very simple for our borrowers as it relates to the mortgage world. Can I just start by just saying the financial markets are, of course, are incredibly intricate, but, but they're, they're very well balanced based off of the information that they know well in advance. There's nothing that you or I know as consumers that somehow I would say that, that the Federal Reserve doesn't know or the financial Wall Street guys don't know. I mean, when you, when you or I, as just people, lay, lay people on the street, think of the you know, interest rates, we know only a small, we only know like a fraction of what those traders on Wall Street know. Mm -hmm. There's all the speculation. So whatever we think, there's, <laughs> you know, I, I guess I wouldn't give, don't give much weight to what your opinion is so much where, where rates are going to go. Because I mean, really we, I'm wrong. I don't know. Yeah. I don't and, know where and, rates are going to go. And I will tell you, besides just our, our subject matter, um, a lot of the economists, the major economists, not within the federal reserve, um, you know, committee group don't know where rates are going to go. And if anyone really, really did know, and, and when you say rates, Rates really are only applicable as, a, as it relates to where our market is. And because interest rates are used to control our market, the overall health of our market. We need jobs and we need, you know, consumers to be confident about their, about their ability to be able to spend. So interest rates are really determined, are really controlled by, by the market. And no one knows where the market's going. 
Um, there are a couple of brilliant minds in this world that, that probably have pretty good crystal balls. But the point is, is nobody knows. Otherwise, they'd be living in a, in a gold tower on some island off the coast of... Yeah. Yeah. And how about this? If, if Mike, my borrower who told me, oh, yeah, rates are going down on Wednesday a quarter, like rates in general, like mortgage interest rates, they thought. If they made a good, if they knew that for a fact that mortgage rates were going to go down and for a quarter, I mean, like literally the, the mortgage rate itself, 30 year note, they could have made a huge trade on Wall Street and made a ton of money. Right. Okay. Right. The thing is, so. And and, and what you're pointing out is that that gentleman, um, maybe two months ago could have forecasted rates will go down over the next 60, 90, 120 days. But your point is, is that no one knows they're going to go down tomorrow. Everything happens on a very gradual, gradual basis. Um, Otherwise, you would have fortune tellers, people making millions of dollars, not ever having to work. Right. Okay. So so what does that mean? Where where, where do we go from here? So this whole conversation really revolves around the Federal Reserve. Okay. When people hear about interest rates are going up, interest rates are going down, or whatever whatever it is, they're talking about the Federal Reserve. It's the Federal Reserve talking. You know, and today our chairman is uh, Jerome Powell, and they have these meetings every, they, what, we were, uh, there's eight, 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 eight times a year? Eight times a year, they're meeting, and they just met at the end of July, so on July 31st, which is the day of this recording, uh, 2019, Jerome Powell announced, you know, what they're going to do with rates, and they're going to lower the Federal Reserve rate a quarter of a percent. Now, so, what happened to mortgage rates, Tom, today? Right. How does that affect the mortgages? Yeah. So, I, I think probably the easiest thing for us is to what? Kind of split this in two. We have the interest rates that affect consumers. So, we have the, the consumer impact, but then you have the mortgage impact. I think. Okay. And before we go there, mm-hmm. what happened to mortgage rates today? Nothing. They did not, they did not move. So, wh- wait a minute. I thought the Federal Reserve reduced it rates a quarter, but they didn't change mortgage rates at all. So that's where we're going to, so yeah, I just want to. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's right. And I think the, the real quick answer, because we'll probably get into a little bit more here in a little bit, but the quick answer is that quarter percent drop has been, you know, leaked slowly into the market through analysts, spe- you know, a speculation and whatnot over the past three or four months. Weeks. Minks and yeah. months. And months. Yeah. So um, again, the fortune teller, you can say looking ahead, oh, times are, you know, might get tough or times might get bad. I think rates are going to go up or go down. Yes, people can typically call when that they would generally go up or down, but no one can call overnight. So one of the most important things for our listeners is that when the Fed fund, you know, or when the Federal Reserve meets and the Fed fund rate um, goes up or down, it has no immediate impact on mortgage rates. Um, other than it being something totally different than what the analysts had expected. Yes. And, and I'm just going to continue, 78%, so nearly 80% of analysts anticipated that there would be a 25% drop only. So that the huge majority had already anticipated 25%. So it was already built in, people. I mean, like, the, the yeah. rates were, they weren't expecting a half a percent. So there was no surprise. And that's why the market's, didn't really react at all. They were already, yeah. it was already built in is what we're saying. So, so do you think, um, again, without getting, getting too, too into the minutia of this, what do you think our listeners really want to take away from, from this? If, if we've already told them the interest rates are not changing in one day's time, what do they want to know? They, they, How does this maybe affect them today and going forward, you know, in, in the near term, like, in, you know, in August, and into September and maybe the right, you know, the rest of this year for 2019. Yeah. And, and, and when, when the feds meet again in the, in the future, they can have a better idea as to how that might impact them. Yeah. So the meeting today on July 31st, they're, they're all, now they're, now they're giving clues where rates, where, what they might be talking about next time in September. So mm-hmm. they're already planting the little seeds and all the analysts are going to be speculating. What did he, what did Jerome Powell mean by this word or that word? Mm-hmm. And then and they'll draw their own conclusions. Right. And, and, and so the market's going to be you know, trading, trading the, the, in the bond market and the, you know, the, right. the, the, basically the mortgage market, you know, uh, however they want, 
however they speculate. So, so why don't we talk about, okay, so how does the actual meeting today or that happened on July 31st, because by the time this podcast gets released, it'll be, what, in a week or two. Yeah. Um, so, so how did that affect um, our, our borrowers? Uh, we got the consumer side and then our mortgages. Um, right. Why don't you talk about the consumer side? What, what are the biggest impacts and what the feds do that, that affect us as consumers? Right. So all of us, if you have credit cards, and if you have balances, you know, if you don't pay them off every month, right? If you have credit card balances, your, your credit card interest just got a quarter percent less because the prime rate is attached to credit cards. So mm, quarter big, percent. Big deal. And the prime rate is directly affected by the, the Federal Reserve's movements. So, uh, okay, home equity lines wow. of credit, mm-hmm. same thing. If you have a home equity line of credit with the balance, your interest next month will be a quarter percent less. Um, How about auto, auto loans? Yeah, auto loans, personal loans. So on the personal side, because it's driven by the prime rate, prime rate is directly affected by the Fed rate. Like I said, you, our consumers are going to see a little bit easing of that of that interest next month. Small small business loans. So any any type of um, loan in which you are literally consuming, you know, buying, eating, using, painting, spreading. Um, all that, that's good news when, when the Fed's, you know, lower. And they're really doing that to help stimulate some of that consumer-driven yeah. um, action. And, and, you know, I know that these are consumers but, too, but, you know, and businesses as well. Like, you know, small, small businesses. Yeah, they, they, they all need to, you know, consume and grow. Social so, loans, yeah. So how about on the actual mortgage side? So, and, and I was just trying to create yeah. a, a differentiation. It's, you know, the mortgage is not a consumption. It's not a thing that you're consuming. Yeah. The housing industry is really something separate. Yeah. So, so how does that affect the mortgages? Okay. So with mortgages, it, mortgages is all about, I mean, uh, like, like since, we're, since mortgages are not tied to the prime rate or the federal reserve, right? Because, because they're not, unless it's, it's and, not tied. Yep. Yep. Unless they're HELOCs or they might have adjustable rate mortgages. Uh, oh in, yeah, good point. And if you have an arm, in the case of mortgage. yep, uh, you know, even rever- reverse mortgages that are um, an adjustable rates, um, those are all going to be good days today. But yeah, with, the, with the with the exception of those, right? Mortgages so if, are not typically tied to prime, right? So if there's if you're a, on a if you want a thirty year fixed, a fifteen year twenty, or any fixed mortgage, which maj- a far majority of loans are just fixed. Those loans themselves are not affected today. They're affected by the Wall Street buyers of the bonds. So basically, mortgages are, are chopped into small pieces. Um, I believe $10,000 is what buys you a you know, one unit of a Fannie Mae bond. Anyway, the point is, mm-hmm. mortgages are traded by, are owned by pension funds and governments all across the world. And you and I, as consumers, can actually buy mortgage bonds. And so... Uh, the, the next day, the, the next several days and weeks and months, it will be those buyers of those bonds, the demand, whether demand's high or low, that will determine where rates will be. So it's the bond market really that, that affects the, the mortgage rates. And that's what we look at most is the bond rates, mm-hmm. right? In another way, the 10 year bond is what really, uh, as lenders we look at. To right, see where rates are going, but but it's not. It doesn't it doesn't predict. It just shows you where we're at. Right, right, exactly. And then there's not a direct correlation between the Fed funds rate and where the ten-year Treasury typically goes, but they're typically connected. That as one moves down, the other moves down. Uh, but they're not. There's not a direct correlation there. So Good I. Point. I so I, I think that was the the important thing is you've got really what happened from the from the Fed's perspective really affected consumers. What, what, you know, is going to happen on the mortgage side um, takes a lot longer to do um, and is more impacted by the actual investment community itself, which will feed a little bit off of what, what happens with the consumers, obviously. But yeah. it's, the, it's the market. It's that bond market that, that dictates, um, you know, who, who's buying and who's selling mortgages. Yeah. And then you're right. I mean, you you're going to have, I mean, you, it's, it would be rare to see a very low Fed rate and a high mortgage rate. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. They, they, they do, they do, they're not perfectly correlated at all or, or, or very correlated much at all, but they do follow each other. There's, there's a lot of lag. 
They look at each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They kind of rhyme. Right. But okay. What so else? Is, so, yeah. So I, I don't want to make it too complicated. Um, I, I hope that anyone who's still watching or listening to this podcast is still uh, getting something from it. So, um, and Tom, I mean, like, okay. So we, we talk about mortgages. I mean, like, again, there's, we can't predict it. Just mm-hmm. because the, Fred, the Fed says something, folks, do not think that that cannot change or pivot on a, on a, on a moment's notice. It does all the time. So um, you or I, are, we're, not, we're not traders on Wall Street. So do not, do not try to predict where the rates will be. It's gonna be it is too hard to tell. Yeah. We, we do think in general that rates will be relatively where they're at. We don't see rising interest rates. So I do, I do feel confident in saying that. I don't see rising interest rates coming. Right. A, a year ago, year and a half ago, I would have said interest rates definitely higher. Right. You know, way too many indicators showing that we have too many positive things going on for interest rates to be so low. Because again, those interest rates are really meant to help the market. And why are we needing so much help in a market that seems so, so positive? with so much, you know, um, upside to it. So um, I have been flabbergasted for probably the last, you know, 18 months. Um, I'm, I'm just shocked. So if you are on the fence still thinking about, you know, refinancing or purchasing, today really is a good time because frankly, it doesn't make sense to me why interest rates are still, you know, in the high threes. Right. Very good right now. And then so, um, Tom, can we can just maybe quickly say that when the Fed moves, the Fed, when, when they announce the Fed rate, um, it, oh, did, did we talk about anything? What else does it affect? We were talking about the, maybe the- Well, we talked about the discount or, or rate. The discount rate and the Fed rate. What is the Fed rate? Like, what the heck is it? We haven't even, we didn't even say what it is. Yeah, and I was kind of hoping you weren't going to ask that because it's, it is such a difficult thing. They, they actually talk about it being a target. They, 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 so it's not like they like, like punch into their, into their computer that it's going to, you know, go down 0.25%. They actually target that it's going to go down by a quarter of a percent. Yeah. And by being able to manipulate things within the market, um, uh, everything ends up falling down into or going up to whatever that, that rate well, is. Right now, now, right now, the Fed fund rate went from 2.5% to 2 and a quarter. So what we know is that that is – you know, it doesn't affect us directly, but it does, it is the, is the interest rate that banks are going to be able to borrow from the federal reserve. It's the over, they call it the overnight rate sometimes. Yes. So they're going to be, if they borrow money from the, if they take a loan from the federal reserve, they're going to be borrowing it at two and a quarter. So it will affect savings accounts, CDs, uh, money market accounts. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you have money in a bunch of money stuffed away in a money market or savings account, you're going to make less interest. Right, in right. Going to, going to lose money. That, that's right. Yeah. So the Fed funds rate, um, yeah, the interest rate that typically banks will, will lend to each other. Um, you know, they have reserves that they have to be able to, to meet that the Federal Reserve requires that they have every night. Um, there's also another rate just for perspective. It's called the discount rate. And that's uh, the interest rate at which the Federal Reserve will actually lend to banks in order to meet certain reserve requirements every day. And it's always a little bit more expensive um, than the um, Fed funds. And that gets a little bit, there's, there's a lot there. Um, but, but basically, Fed funds rate, the discount rate, and the prime rate is kind of what we were talking about before the podcast. The prime rate being really what everyone uses for consumers. Uh, the Fed funds rate really being what we're talking about today because that's what's, what's being set. And the discount rate is probably that, that third piece out there that uh, – we didn't talk about it as much. But okay. Well, I, I think that makes sense. Yeah, no problem. I, I think that, you know, and I, I probably butchered the, the Fed runs because the Fed funds rate is, that's the rate that the banks charge each other. Correct. Yes, I got Correct. that backwards. I got, yeah. That, no, I think you said that. And then the discount is what the, the bank is, is, is what the uh, Fed actually charges the Fed bank. charges the bank. Yeah. Right. Okay. So right. people, there's a lot of these different rates out there. It's not important to know these things. Just kind of be aware. Mm-hmm. And I think the number one takeaway from this is when you hear that rates are dropping a quarter percent or rising up a quarter percent, know that that has already been accounted for. Very likely will 
you know, it's only the surprises. It's only when the news is a, is a surprise because it's just like business, you know, public companies when they're announcing their, their earnings for next, next quarter. Mm. The only time stock you see large stock increases or stock, you know, uh, decreases is when the estimates are off. Right. Oh my gosh. Un- unemployment's a lot worse than we thought. Well, that'll affect the, the, the stock market. Right. Apple and, does a lot worse on their earnings. They'll, you know, if it, any surprises is what you see movements in. Right. And this may be stupid, but we can kind of end with this, with kind of a domestic example. You know, if our economy was like a cup of coffee, you know, there's a perfect temperature at which the coffee should be, should be drank. Um, the, the actual drinker of, of that coffee would, would be, I guess, the Federal Reserve, and they want that coffee to be perfect. When that coffee gets too cold, they do certain things to it. When the coffee gets too hot, they do certain things to it. A lot of people will add creamer, you know, if a coffee's too hot. So there, there are certain things that the feathers do, are doing to make that cup of coffee, which is our market, always be as perfect as they can, as it can be, so that we, as you know, American, you know, consumers can keep working and keep buying things in a relatively stable market. Yeah, I like that. I like that's a great analogy. They don't want it to get over, infl- you know, they, they help it helps with inflation. It yeah. helps them. They don't want the economy to get too hot or or too right. Too, and, know, and and they're not doing cold. it because they're not doing it because they're bored. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So okay. And uh, I think that wraps it up. So everyone who's still watching, thank you. And subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are watching it on YouTube. Uh, and uh, I think we're, we're done. All right. Let's call it a day. All right. All right. We'll see you, folks. All right. All right. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to the Mortgage Brothers Show. Please let us know if you have any questions you'd like us to answer on this podcast. You can email your questions to Tom at azmortgagebrothers.com or yours truly at eddie at azmortgagebrothers.com. And be sure to ask us for a free quote on your next mortgage. Tom and I will personally work with you and help you through the whole process. Signature Home Loans LLC does not provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. This material has been prepared for informational purposes only. You should consult your own tax, legal, and accounting advisors before engaging in any transaction. Signature Home Loans, NMLS 107154, NMLS number 210917, and 161-8695, equal housing lender.